I am currently reviewing photos and finalizing my first photo book. And in the process of doing so, I realize that some of these photographs have interesting stories. I do not believe photography is just about taking decent looking photographs. It's also about learning, exploring and growing as an artist. Hi, my name is Jorge. Welcome. In this channel, we merge creativity and productivity to try to live a more fulfilling life. While reviewing some of the photos that are going into my photo book, I realized that some of these have really interesting stories. Almost none of these photographs are your typical touristy photos in well-known landscapes and areas. They're more about the personal experiences that I have with street photography. So I'd like to share a handful of these stories with you today and also talk about some of the photographs as well. Let's get started. Before we dive in and take a look at the photographs, I just want to mention that I'm not saying that these are great photos, I'm not claiming that I am the best or these are the best experiences, I just want to share some of my experiences with you. Some of these photos may not seem like a whole lot to you, but to me, they have meaning, they have a backstory, they represent a period in my life. And the main reason why I wanted to share some of these with you today is because while I was flipping through my photo book, I could see the experiences, I could relive the moments while I was browsing it, which is incredible. It's amazing to be able to see a photograph and it just gives you a smile because you remember what happened, you remember the story behind that photo, regardless of whether you think the photo is good or not. This photo right here is one of my favorites and I have talked about this photo before in one of my videos, but I'll elaborate here and talk a bit more further. At the beginning of my journey in Japan, I was fairly new to everything, including the language. And one of these days I was exploring the streets of Tokyo and just walking randomly and taking photos. So I came across this lady, she was maybe in her 50s or 60s and she sort of hand signals to, to be in the photo. So I was like, okay, right, no problem. I'm gonna take a photo and she post for me. She crossed her legs and everything and it was just one of those moments that you cannot really ask for and you don't know what they're gonna happen. It's just completely random. You have no control. You have to either embrace it or ignore it. And I happen to love the results as well. It's one of my favorite photos and I get it. This is not a photo that everybody will consider to be good or even like. But when I think about that moment, that sort of experience that I had, it's not something that happens every single day. The thing is you have to be open-minded for opportunities like this to present themselves to you. And you have to take advantage of those because you have no control of opportunities like this. So you have to try to make the best out of them, really. And it's also not completely obvious where it is. Like I could say this is in Germany, I could say this is here in Canada, I could say that's in Japan. And it's not very obvious, but to me, I immediately know where it was, even the street name and everything. And it's just incredible, right? The, the way you can associate a feeling and a thought to an image, it's just amazing. This second photograph is one of my favorites. This was taken in the Shinkansen platform, the, the bullet train platform. And the thing is, to be able to stand in that platform, you have to have a ticket for the Shinkansen. So you can only do that when you're traveling. A ticket could be about $160 to $200, depending on the city that you're visiting or you're going. So the thing is, I went to the platform about three hours before I actually had to take the train so I could stand on the platform and take photos of the trains. So I arrived there early and I tried to take a couple photos, but they're really awful. And after about 45 minutes, I realized that the personnel was leaving and exiting the train. So a change of shift. So those are the bullet train attendants getting ready to board the train, getting ready to start their shift. And it was just amazing to be able to capture it with the actual train in there as well. I mean, I wish my shutter speed was a little higher, but what can you do, right? Nobody's perfect. This is actually one of my favorite photographs that I've taken ever. I have mentioned before that I only shoot 4x3 or 16x9 to replicate the mood and the tone and the look of film. And this entire photograph is just a homage to cinema. It's a reference to one of my favorite films, Bicycle Thieves, from Victoria de Sica in 1948, one of the best movies ever made. And I just wanted to capture the same tone, the same emotion, the same feeling. And in order to do that, I had to stand in that location for about two hours and just wait there. And hopefully somebody walks into the frame. So yeah, it was a little bit painful. Uh, it wasn't that fun when I was standing there and just waiting, it was kind of boring. But I thought to myself, perhaps I can get something that is worth, you know, saving and showcasing. And I was right. I just had to sit there and put in the time, put in the work and get the photograph. 
This is one of those photos that looks really normal and really easy to get, but it took me 730 shots to get that specific shot. It was for a department store in Osaka, so I had to go inside the department store and ride the escalator and just try to get it at the perfect angle, right at the center, with nailing the focusing, nailing the exposure. With uh, billboards and LED lights, it changes the brightness, so some photos were overexposed, some photos were underexposed, and I had to make changes on the fly. And that really shows you that you have to be in control of your domain. You have to know how to expose manually and properly, and autofocus manually and properly as well, and be able to adapt and change on the fly, because in that specific situation, I had really no control over anything. This one didn't feel tedious or boring to me. In fact, it felt really fun. I could tell the, the, the staff of the mall were looking at me going up and down, up and down, like what the hell is going on with this guy? But at the end, I got the shot. After 700 photos, I got this shot. So yeah, I like it. This is another photo that is very simple and the story is actually very simple as well. I was just riding the escalator down and I see this girl and she's wearing this nice cute uh, ribbon, hair bow, I, I don't know what the name is, and I just took the photo. It was less than 10 seconds, I saw it, I realized it, took the photo, that's it. And even though the story is not that eventful, that really tells me again that you really have to have control over over your your medium, your settings, your camera, know what you're doing. Because sometimes you just realize and you have a small window to take a photo. And if you're just playing with auto menus and auto focusing and not nailing things the way they should, when you have the opportunity, then you may lose the opportunity, right? So it's something to keep in mind. I know the story is not that big of a deal, but I like the photo and it was just one of those things that I'm just so now looking at somewhere and I realized that I was like, all right, I took the photo, that's it. Less than 10 seconds, one of my favorite photos. Pretty cool. I took this photo when I was reviewing the X100. And this is one of those photos that made me realize that things had really changed permanently. When I moved to Japan, most people wear a mask before the pandemic. It was just a normal thing to do. Not so much here in Canada. I would never seen people wearing masks in the street. And when I came back to Canada and I saw people wearing masks, I saw it as normal because I was already used to it after a year living in Japan. But then I started to think about this is not something that I would ever see here in this country. And this is when, you know, you realize that things have changed permanently. So I do like this photo quite a bit and the image quality is really high, even though I shot it with the X100. It also shows you that the camera is pretty good, even in 2021. Another of my favorite photos, I shot this one in Banff last summer. Um, the cool thing about this photo is that I shot it with the X-T3. Back then I was thinking that I used the X100 series for a while now and I was ready to graduate into the X-T series and after using it for about a month I realized it's just really not the camera for me. I, d I don't like the placement of the viewfinder. There's a lot of things that I don't like about the camera. The image quality is great and it's amazing. It was just not for me. However, I found this spot in a small shop that had tons of uh, reflections and mirrors and light bulbs and things like that and you can see it being reflected in the photo. It's actually one of my favorites. It was just pure luck that I found this real spot to take photos and just wait for people to cross the frame and hopefully nail the exposure and the focus and that's it. Just take the shot. So a lot of these photos are about being in the right location at the right time. But more than that, it's just forcing yourself to explore, to be out there. The more you try, the more things can happen and the more chances you have of capturing things like this, which is the main idea. And now that I've showed you a couple of these photos, the point that I want to make is that none of these photos scream Japan or Canada. These photos could have been taken anywhere and I could just be naming countries just for the sake of doing that. But the point is, none of my photos are in this really popular touristy areas that most people have the exact same photo and you just post on Instagram to say, I've been here, I, I explore this place, look at me, right? My photos are about the experiences and most of the photos I remember I remember the feeling of being there and taking the photo, what I was trying to achieve, what was going through my mind. So the point that I'm trying to make is that when you're out in the boat taking photos and exploring, think about your experiences. Think about photography as an art medium form, something that can potentially teach you a thing or two about yourself and make you learn and grow as, a, as an artist, but also your intentionality of the photograph. Are you taking the photo just to show somebody that you went to a location, just to brag? Or are you taking a photo because you have something in mind, a particular style and look that you want to craft? Are you creating experiences that you can remember just by glancing at a photo book and smile and be happy that you did it? What's the point of taking photos? 
So those were some of the experiences behind the photographs that I've taken before and why I decided to share that with you. Hopefully that was helpful. As always, I'm curious to know what you guys think. Was this entertaining or boring? Was not helpful? Would you like to see this become a dedicated series that I do every now and then just talking about the process of some of my photographs and, and what the experiences were? Leave a comment down below. But that is it for today's video. If you found this video helpful or valuable, please like and subscribe and also follow me on Instagram as well. Thank you very much for watching, for giving me your time and your energy, and good luck with your creative process.